If you are working on a portable electronics project, or in a remote place, where you can't bring your bulky bench power supply with you, then powering your circuit, becomes quite challenging sometimes. To power our projects we often use lithium-ion or LiPo batteries. These batteries are convenient to use, because they are small, rechargeable, and often come in various shapes and sizes. But the issue with these batteries is that, most of these batteries are rated for 3.7 volts, and a maximum of 4.2 volts. Now for our application, we generally need either 3.3 volts or 5 volts, because typical microcontrollers and sensors work on these voltage levels. So in order to get the right voltage, you either need a buck converter or a boost converter. Then we also need a charging circuit, to charge the battery. So all and all, you need some additional circuitry, in order to use this kind of batteries. At this point, you might think, why should we bother with all these, and why not just use a power bank then? It's portable, can output 5 volt, also it's rechargeable. And yes, we could use a ready-made power bank, to power our projects. But there comes another problem. You see, those commercially available power banks, require a minimum holding current typically 100 mA, to stay on. Now, if you use deep sleep in your circuit, to save some power, then the power bank will no longer work properly. Because in the deep sleep stage, the microcontroller consumes very less amount of current, which usually falls under the minimum required current of the power bank. And thus it turns off automatically, after some time, as the device enters into deep sleep. So keeping these things in mind, I started working on this project, to make a trusty portable power supply unit, that can power my projects uninterruptedly. Let's have a closer look at what we have in this circuit. We have separated outputs for 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and an adjustable voltage output, which basically fulfills most of our power related demands. We have both USB type C and micro USB port for charging. It runs on two 18650 lithium ion batteries, which gives us roughly about 5000 milliamp hour of battery backup. And some extra features which we will discuss later on this video. This is the schematic of this project. As you can see, we have TP4056 battery charging IC. And you might already know from my previous project, TP4056 in combination with DW01A and FS8205A, provides all kinds of battery protection features. Such as overcharge, over discharge, short circuit and reverse polarity protection. Then we have two boost converter circuits based around MT3608 IC, for both 5V and adjustable voltage output. As per the datasheet, it can deliver up to 2 amps of current. And an AMS1117 LDO, to get the 3.3V output. After designing the PCB, I head over to PCBBase website, for manufacturing the PCB. Who are also sponsoring this project. Upload your gerber files, to get high quality, professionally manufactured, custom PCB, for your project, for just only $5. After a few days I received the PCBs at my doorstep. After assembling the PCB, our project looks like this. 
So, it's time for testing. I first inserted the batteries in it, and started charging it. It is now fully charged. Let's see how much current it consumes, when it's in standby. And as you can see, it's very low, so that's a good thing. Ok, now let's turn on the outputs. On this module, you can turn on or off each output by using these switches. And the LED will indicate which one is turned on, and which one is not. So we are getting a steady 5 volt output as expected. And on the adjustable side we can get up to 13 volts. I also added a tiny voltmeter to show the adjustable voltage readings. We can get the output from these screw terminals, or from these DC barrel jacks, as well as from these header pins. And for 5 volt output, we also have a female USB connector, so you can plug any USB device directly. We can also connect some external batteries to these JST connectors, to charge or use them as well. Let's put on some loads and see how it performs. Now, I was curious about, whether we can charge it by using solar panels, or not. As TP4056 also supports that. And as it turns out we actually can. Last but not the least, when working with microcontrollers, you may need to measure the battery voltage, or charging status, and for that, there are some header pins. Which you can connect to get those values, which in my opinion is very convenient. So that is it for today. Hope you enjoy the video. Leave a like if you do, share and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.